Engrossed Senate Bill 714 relating to Physician Assistance Practice Act. Third reading of the bill. Question is on passage of the bill, Senator from Marshall. Thank you, Mr. President. This uh, bill, Senate Bill 714, was the originating bill in committee that eliminates the practice agreement between a physician assistant and the physician. The practice agreement was a document that was approved by the licensing board. In lieu of the practice agreement, there is a practice notification which may be kept on file at the practice. The bill provides an alternative for certification from the National Commission on Certification of Physician Assistants by providing that the physician assistant have a current license in good standing from a state that does not require a physician assistant to maintain national certification. The physician assistant rulemaking is modified to reflect prescriptive authority for Schedule II drugs for no more than a three-day supply with no refills. Mr. President, the practice requirements were modified to note that a physician assistant may practice in collaboration with physicians in any practice setting pursuant to a practice notification which has been filed with and activated by the appropriate board in accordance with the bill provided the physician assistant who is currently practicing in collaboration with physicians pursuant to a practice agreement, which was authorized prior to June 1, 2021, may continue to practice under that authorization until the practice agreement terminates on June 1, 2022, whichever is sooner. Mr. President, I urge passage. Question is on passage of the bill. Is there a discussion? Senior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the chairman and uh, the council for doing a lot of hard work on this bill. It, um, on, on your desks, uh, I placed a uh, pamphlet. You know, the physician assistants came to us, uh, and it was a little bit later in the session, so, but the concern was, you know, physician assistants are highly uh, trained individuals. They essentially go through a, um, a slightly watered down medical school. They do three years after undergrad, much like physicians do four years. They do gross anatomy, they do uh, pretty intensive training. And in West Virginia, per capita, we have currently five PA schools, yet uh, when you, their national organization is looking uh, overall, we are one of the most restrictive and difficult states for a physician assistant to practice uh, in the country. Um, there are six key elements that they look at to see how well can a physician assistant, which has really been trained uh, is to be the right hand to, to assist the physicians in, in whatever type of activity they're doing. Uh, and we only had one of six. I was kind of shocked by that, to be honest. And so they come asking us, you know, could we please help them? Uh, they, they're a state that they're proud to train in. They're a state that they try to recruit and maintain. And, and with West Virginia being, you know, 52 or 53 of 55 counties being underserved uh, medically, they're certainly, certainly needed. And so what this bill does is, is advances their practice. It truly will be a, um, a blessing to physicians to be able to have um, more leeway and allow them to practice and provide better care. And so uh, physician assistants, you know, for many years they've been ranked number one as the, or, or in the top ten anyway, of the U.S. News World Report best jobs. They've been ranked number one best STEM jobs. They've been ranked number one best health care jobs, and so uh, I hated to see our state being so restrictive on such highly valued individuals, and I think this bill will change this from being only having one of those key elements out of six to six out of six, so I strongly urge passage. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Senator from Boone. Thank you, Mr. President. I also rise in support of this bill. Uh, I have been blessed with the ability to have practiced with uh, physician assistants over the years and they are an important uh, group of providers. The passage of this bill will expand access to care. I can tell you of several uh, scenarios where um, having 72 hours of being able to prescribe uh, Schedule II drugs would certainly uh, be a positive impact for the patients uh, here in West Virginia. Uh, again, uh, there's mechanisms now in place with the Board of Pharmacy for us to uh, make sure that uh, we're not going to have uh, any uh, malfeasance, if you would, or any uh, evidence of uh, uh, further addiction, et cetera, by doing this. This simply will allow patients in West Virginia to have more access to care. 
and I applaud the uh, chairman and uh, the Senate for getting behind this and, and all the work on it. The uh, boards of osteopathy, the boards of medicine uh, are good with this. Uh, they've been in a lot of discussion. So I urge passage of Senate Bill 714. Further discussion, junior senator from the 8th. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in support of this measure too, Senate Bill 714, and I'd like to thank uh, the chairman, uh, Senator from Marshall from Health, and then, of course the senior senator from the 17th in originating this bill and putting it before us. Um, physicians' assistants, like nurse practitioners, are what are considered mid-level positions or mid-level folks. Uh, they end up doing a lot of the work and can take off a lot of pressure that are on our physicians to provide care and create and, and expand access to West Virginians. And our nurse pr practitioners are great. Um, they have, over the years though, gotten more responsibility where our physician's assistants haven't. And that doesn't really make sense to the extent that our phys physician's assistants or the, the, the profession of being a physician's assistant, as the senator from 17th just pointed out, they get a watered-down version of medical school, so they have more education, they have more CAME, CME requirements, and this just puts them on a level playing field at, uh, with our nurse practitioners here in West Virginia. I think it's a great piece of legislation. I thank again the folks who originated and put it before us, and I urge adoption. Thank you. Senior Senator from the 5th. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President, uh, would the senior senator from the 17th... Uh, well, the yield. senator yield, the senator yields. Senator, uh, I've grown up all my life on watching TV, and it says when two out of three doctors recommend this, that we do it. But three out of three doctors recommend this. What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to do it with an exclamation mark, Senator. Thank you. Senator from Brooke. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you know, a lot of what we talk about here uh, is, is, is aimed at opening up access to treatment for West Virginians. Well, this is a bill that will open up access to excellent treatment. Uh, in my mind, what our PAs do here in the state is, is, is vital to health care uh, for all of our counties. Um, you know, this, this modernizes the practice of, of, of being a PA here in the state of West Virginia. We're, we're the most restrictive in the nation. And so by getting rid of, of the, the, the shackles that we have on this profession, a profession, Mr. President, that, you know, over the past couple of years, the demand for PAs has increased 300 percent around the nation. And over the next couple of years, that, that demand and that increase in jobs is supposed to increase by another 31 percent in the next several years. So we think about that and we think about providing health care to West Virginians in, in rural parts of the state, in underserved parts of the state, our, our, the, the PAs here are, are going to do that. And this bill will be a, a, a big piece of the puzzle in helping them do that. Um, you know, over the past couple of weeks, received a lot of emails on this bill. And you start to think, of, you know, who's sending these emails out? And, and what's the message behind it? And reading through them, you know, they're from PAs from around the state who care about their profession who want to see their profession succeed, who want to make sure that, that they're able to care for their, their patients uh, and, and give them that excellent care that they're able to do. And I, I think that's really part of it. Um, Mr. President, a couple years ago, I had the opportunity to speak to a, a professional group in the state of Kentucky. And instead of you know, just speeding away from the event, as you know, sometimes a lot of people do, I had the opportunity to, to sit down and talk with some of the professionals who were there. And, and some of them were PAs who practiced in Kentucky and we're familiar with the restrictions that we have here in West Virginia, and, and we talked about that. And, and so I had a little bit of background in this bill, and so I'm glad that we're going to bring the state of West Virginia and their practice in the line with, with the more uh, you know, palatable standards that the rest of the nation has and, and continue to provide that excellent care. Thank you, Mr. President. Is there further discussion? If not, Senator from Marshall wish to close debate? President, uh, just quickly, uh, the only regret I have with this bill is the fact that I didn't run it last year or the year before. Um, this is a long time coming for PAs. It's, it's a very, very good bill. It's a good bill for PAs. It's 
It's a good bill for physicians. It's a good bill for hospitals. And thus, well, actually, it's an it's a access bill. It's an access to health care bill, as the Senator from Boone pointed out. And thus, it's a very good bill for the citizens of West Virginia. I urge passage. Question before Senator, shall the bill pass? All those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk shall prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? If so, the clerk closed the machine and ascertained the results. On this question, 34 yeas, 0 nays, 0 absent, and not voting. More than a majority of those present and voting having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. The clerk will communicate the actions of the Senate to the House.